Hello Travelers people, welcome to another video on server services and in this one I want to explain what is S3 Object Lambda. S3 Object Lambda has been released almost one year ago and I find that it's a very useful service for modern application. In order to explain this service I want to show you first an example and which um, problems we are trying to solve with this service. So let's say we have a typical um, healthcare application where we have like our users interacting with an application server and we save um, user data in an S3 bucket. In the S3 bucket we have a JSON file with different information about our patients since we are like doing a, an healthcare example. So we have like name, address, social security number, hey wave, all this kind of um, you know PII information, so, so personal information. So we have this file and let's say we have different access pattern in our application. So in some case we need the object as it is, as you can see here. In some other uh, use cases, you only want to get maybe the um, data about the height, weight, and gender. Uh, so anonymizing the data, you don't want to have name, address, or any personal information about the users. In some other use cases, you want to add and maybe cross the data with uh, external databases or external services. How would you do that if you have these objects saved in S3? So there are like different approaches using S3 object lambda is what we're trying to solve here in order to make it like easier for you. So the first approach without uh, thinking about S3 object lambda is to pre-process the data. So let's say you want to anonymize data of the JSON file we have here on the right side. You have to basically create like an external service or a Lambda function to pre-process the data every time that the user is asking for the data or every time you have like a process and is this data anonymized. So you need to maintain a kind of a, like a proxy server, a proxy Lambda that get the original object and then transform it to, to be a, a anonymous. So this is not a great approach. The second one can be like client filtering. So the client gets the uh, original object and um, it removes or adds the uh, data that it needs for the specific use case. But first of all, uh, it, you can have like privacy concern because you don't want to send this data to the client side. Also, you, you, the object can be um, big. So it is like, um, uh, it's going to be latency and also the API request is going to take a long time. So it's not great, especially if you are working also with uh, mobile devices. You don't want your API to um, retrieve huge objects. You want to only retrieve the information that you need. The third option, which is um, a little bit better, is like uh, adding an additional API endpoint with maybe API gateway and Lambda function if you want to keep it serverless. And for every use case, so let's say you want anonymized data, you want to add data to your uh, access pattern, you have a different API endpoint. So your uh, client is going to send a request to the API endpoint, Lambda function is going to pre-process and post-process the data and send it back to the client. This is a slightly better approach, but still needs like uh, development work and also needs to add a new endpoint for each of the new use cases. To solve this, AWS team thought about a new way to do it. So a new way of basically pre-process the object that is in S3 and give it back as you want it to the client side. And for this purpose, they invented the um, S3 object lambda feature. So let's go to the next slide and see how it works. Okay, so if we start from the right side, we know we have the uh, patient's JSON file, the one that I showed you before here save on nestry bucket the first thing we need to do to use the object lambda is to add an access point an access point on s3 is basically just um, um an acl group so it's like uh, it's been introduced by s3 uh, team by the s3 team to solve the problem when you have different applications different using users accessing the data you don't want to create uh, for each of the users, for each of the endpoints, a different um, uh, bucket policy or different ACL. So in this case, you configure an access point, which is going to have the set of uh, credentials needed for the use case of the Lambda functions. So this is going to be our entry point to access the S3 bucket and the patient JSON file. So from here, what object Lambda lets you do is to add a Lambda function before accessing the data. So what is going to happen here is that we have a, a runtime with Lambda that can get the data from the S3 bucket. So the patient JSON file is going to get it as an input file 
as an input event, sorry, on the Lambda function, you can perform your changes. It can be anonymized data, like in this one, maybe you want to remove, as I said, personal data, or you can maybe query a third party database. Let's say you want to cross your patient's data with an external doctor uh, data. So you have a third party database or, or a third party in your uh, company infrastructure database that you have to query to link your patients to the doctors. You can do that in this in this phase of the call. So you can, based on the patient here, you, inter you query at the third party database and you add this information into the JSON file to send it back to the user. Based on, on your use case, it can be, you know, removing data or add data, like in this one. From here, we have to add an S3 object lambda access point, which is actually the endpoint that the user is going to um, query from, it, from the client side. The thing we need to change in our application is that the user is not calling anymore the S3 bucket URL, but is calling the S3 object lambda URL. So this URL is going to, the user is going to call the get object in, to this URL and not the S3 URL. And this URL is going to trigger the Lambda function. The Lambda function is going to get the uh, patient JSON file and it's going to process it for you. So in this way, the user, based on what he calls in terms of get object, it gets the data that you want. So as you can see, this is like a more scalable, very flexible way to get a custom objects based on your use case. And this is what uh, S3 object lets you do. So this was like an introduction of what S3 object Lambda tries to solve. I think it's a great feature. It has like multiple use cases. And um, in the next video, I'm going to, I'm going to show you how to basically based on an image that you have on S3, just get back uh, and add the watermark and a resize image using exactly S3 object Lambda. So if you're interested to see the S3 object Lambda in action, Stay tuned, subscribe to the channel, and uh, you will see the next video about this uh, live use case. Thanks again for watching, and see you on the next one.